constantly of Jesus. Let's all stand. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we thank you to the Lord God. Because you are God. And there is none like you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for 20 years that you have brought us through, Lord God. We thank you to the Lord God that we are still here worshiping and praising your holy name. So, Lord God, as we go forward on this afternoon in our worship, we pray, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your spirit will lead us, O oh God, and that your spirit will direct us. Lord God, that you will have your way with us to the Lord God. And the honor will be yours. The praises will be yours. The glory will be yours, Lord God. Let the fellowship, O oh Lord God, of your people, Lord God, O oh God, be magnified. Be lifted up unto the Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Father, we ask your blessing upon our service today. O oh God, as we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory be to God. High five somebody and say it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, how he loved me. Oh, glory be to God. I have a friend, a precious friend. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Give me a scene that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a friend.
of the grave.
God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.
Hallelujah. That is a testimony that every Christian has. And that we know that we know that we know that we know. Take your seat for a minute, please. Hallelujah. That we are saved. And that's not a guess. That is a blessed assurance. That Jesus is a personal thing now. Is mine. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to pick up our offering. But in the meanwhile, we want to welcome our visitors to this our 20th anniversary celebration. Bethany, could you put your hands together for them, please? <laughs> Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. I'm giving the worship team a little breather. We're going to pick up the offering at the sign. Hey, God, I'm so good, kid. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm full and running over. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to follow the direction of the ushers from behind. And we're going to come in order according to the way they would indicate to us. Hallelujah. How many of us know that he is indeed a miracle working God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, we say from time to time that he is a miracle working God. Yes, the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It's okay, breathe in, get in, you know. I didn't tell you to stop. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again. We thank you once again because this is the day that you have made. We will indeed rejoice and we will be glad in it. For it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. We know we can do nothing without you. But indeed, according to your word, Lord, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Lord, like you said to Peter, I have prayed for you because the devil desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. And when you have overcome, strengthen the brethren. I don't know why I'm going there, Lord, but this evening we come to bring back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Mm, somebody needs strength this evening. Hallelujah. Somebody needs strength this evening. Mm. Mm -hmm. Father, as we come to bring a part of what you have blessed us with, Lord, bless it to the forerunners of your kingdom. Bless the givers and those who do not have to give. Lord, open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they would not even have enough room to contain it. So it would run over and they would bless some other person. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Worship team. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am dying, O oh Lord. I have heard.
The word of God said, my sheep know my voice. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. My sheep know my voice. And if I give the worship team a chance, you won't hear the speaker. So we're going to have to make sure, ask them to, according to protocol, that we go on with the service in the middle of the night. <laughs> when it seems dark and dreary, morning is coming, man. Weeping may endure, but for a night. But the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, comes in the morning. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. At this time, we're going to have the visiting churches come and address us. We would prefer if the pastors are here that they come and just greet us briefly. And I stress briefly, we want to give enough time to the, the servants of God and to the pastor to address us. So if you're here, I have a few churches that are written down. I don't know if I miss anybody, please indicate and we will allow you, we will give you that opportunity. We have Pastor Olive, but Pastor will introduce him and he will speak to us later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Could we put our hands together for Jesus, please? Yeah. Hallelujah. Craig. Abundant life, Pastor Craig. I'm looking at the bench and I see quite a few. So somebody's going to come and represent them. Praise God. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pastor Craig is not here. He's not feeling well, so his travel these days are limited. And we had two invitations, one for Tabernacle in Queens and this one. But some of our members are here to celebrate with you. And we give God the glory as we labor together. And I just want to leave with this church, Colossians 3, 14. It says, above these, put on love, which brings together everything in perfect harmony. And once the love of God is present, the Spirit of God will follow. Amen. And where the Spirit of God is, there is power. Amen. 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 So I just give God the glory. Let's continue to pray for each other as we journey together. Amen. 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 So we put our hands together for abundant life this afternoon. Attributes of Christ, Pastor Samuel. Hallelujah to the name. Could we put our hands together, please? Praise the, Praise the Lord. God is truly good. Amen. Amen. How many of us have been enjoying the, the, you know, the, the weekend, the sunshine and everything? God is so good. Amen. Brethren, Amen. I don't know, yesterday I was outside and I was looking at the sunshine. And you know what? No man, not Michelangelo, not um, the Spanish guy, what's his name? Um, I can't believe the artist. No man could have created such a beautiful day. Amen. But God in his goodness gave us that day. Amen. I greet you with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Pastor Daryl, and God bless you. Uh, happy 20th anniversary greetings to each and every one of you. May God continue to prosper you in the things of God. Remember, God didn't call us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And, and, and remember that. You call us to be faithful. And I pray that God will truly bless you and prosper you in the things of God. Amen. Amen. And that when at the end, you may, not, you may not know it, but God will say, Welcome. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So, Pastor, and God bless you. May He raise you up and heal you, heal your body, and give you the strength to carry on. Amen. Amen. So, God bless you much, Mr. Christ Ministries. Amen. Thank you. We put our hands together for attributes of Christ. Evangel Temple, do we have a representative where Pastor Marcus Solon is the pastor? Could we put our hands together as she comes to us? Greet everybody in the name of God. I want to I bring greetings from the saints at Evangel Temple where Pastor Marcus Solon is the pastor. And I just want to encourage you that to continue to hold on to the unchanging arms of God. It's not an easy task to achieve 20 years, but with God, all things are possible. There's a song that says, Let's go forward for the Lord and fight a soldier man. Don't give in, don't you stand for sin. God is mighty and we bound to win. Satan has an evil force that is fighting against God's church. So put on your armor and pull out your sword. We are fighting in the name of the Lord. Let's sing it. Let's go forward for the Lord and fight a soldier man. Don't give in, don't you stand for sin. God is mighty and you bound to win. Satan has an evil force that is fighting. continue to hold on, continue to keep fighting, continue to keep pressing because God is able and he's going to see you through. Thank you very much. Could we put our hands together for Evangel Temple where Pastor Marcus Solon is the pastor. Before I call on the individuals, do we have any more pastors? Do we have any other church that maybe you just came in, you're visiting from another church? What's your church, my sister? And could you come please? Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. It's indeed a pleasure to be here to represent United Faith Evangelistic Ministry. I am Elder Maxine Dennis and I'm here with Minister Donna Waite to, um, to just um, greet you all in the name of our pastor, yes. Apostle Lynette Howard Johnson. She wasn't here to be today because she had to be at another ceremony um, supporting one of our ministers who graduated today. But we are here representing the church. We love you. It's my first time here. I feel welcome and blessed. I know, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit and I'm a teacher, oh my God. I know this is a good place. Anytime I'm in a place and the Holy Spirit starts.
Uh, assistant pastor, Uncle Charles, that's what I call him. He's going to come and like I always tell him briefly, come quickly Uncle Charles. <laughs> briefly Uncle Charles. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> to understand what he says. Briefly. But that's you speaking. But we have to go with God. Whatever God says, what he does is final. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few days, weeks, months, I was speaking to Pastor Cecilia Durant, which is my brother. He wasn't feeling too well, and he said to me, I'm ready to go home. So when he said he's ready to go home, I'm thinking, going home. But he says, he look at me and says, I'm not ready to go to St. Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> After 20 years, he's packing up. He thinks he's packing up to go home. My brother, you have some more years to do in Bethlehem. God place you here. If you look around, if you look next to you, you have backers to back you. If you think you're getting weak, just raise your hand and call out. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You just say, here am I. When he answer you, said, here am I. And he will understand. God bless. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. I'm from Boston. And my pastor is... Pastor Raymond. <laughs> okay. Apostle Floyd Raymond. I had to be here today. Apostle Lee's passed away three days ago and she was going to bury Friday. And they didn't saw me in church today, honestly. Nobody in church know where, where it was except for the pastor. And they didn't saw me in church today. My phone was ringing to find out where I'm at. So I let them know that I'm here celebrating. 20 years. 20 years. It's not 20 days. Bethany, keep on the good works. Amen. Somebody said this morning it's up and down and last night. If you don't go through, you won't be able to come out. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. Good we put our hands together for us. Pastor Charles at this time. We have also with us all the way from St. Vincent. We heard from him this morning, but many of us did not get to hear because you weren't here. And we're going to ask Minister Randy and his wife just to come brief, quickly and, and greet us. Sister, Brother Randy and his beautiful wife, could you come quickly, please? Hallelujah. Could you welcome them as they come? Praise the Lord, Church. It is indeed a pleasure to be here again and to celebrate with our church, home church away from home, and to congratulate Pastor Duran personally on this accomplishment, and to wish you God's blessing for many, many more to come. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here once again. I wasn't here this morning because I was catching up on some sleep. <laughs> but I thank God for bringing us here to celebrate with you. I want to congratulate Pastor Durant and the members of this church on your 20th anniversary. And I pray that God will continue to grow this ministry both numerically and spiritually. God bless you. Thank you, my brother and sister. Could you, George, could you stand with me, please? Hallelujah to the name of Jesus.
church at this time. Could we put our hands together, please? Hallelujah. Could we put our hands together as we welcome the angel of the house? Pastor, Sister, W. Joe Durant. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Greetings and salutation in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Could I see the hand of all those who have got the booklet? Okay, Sister Judy, I haven't got the booklet. Could you give for one, please? Because we are going to waver and be reading of all the readings that are there. Twenty years. I think you better hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, you may be seated. Um, Evangelist Durant. God has been good to us. On the 14th last month, May, we celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. our 20th year anniversary. It was 20 years ago I was living between Boston and Brooklyn, New York. I don't know if that is connected or where. But I was living there and I was attending a church um, a Baptist church, a 
Pentecostal churches and um, Lord God had to speak to me one night when I was supposed to minister at the Riverside Church Baptist Church. So I said to God, I said, I came out from there, but I don't like them. towards praying back. And you know what? There were two trees, branches that were taken from that cedar tree and were planted. And as usual, I asked the pastor who was then Pastor Olive. Permissions to speak the vision that the Lord gave me. And there is where Bethany started. The tree was really cut through. Better the deliverance started from there, likewise divine word of truth. And although whatever happened, happened, Trinity Apostolic is still standing and standing stronger. than it was. I want to give God thanks and praise, honor and glory and I think I heard somebody said worry not for the Lord. I'm not going to say our I'm going to let it be personal. Were it not for the lack of on my side, I have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the lack God has kept me. Um, uh, I'm going to cut it there. I want to go home early. <laughs> um, Pastor Olive 
is a good friend of mine. And in my situation, I've been praying every day for him and his church. And one would have asked, um, uh, why ask Pastor Olive to minister this evening? this opportunity presenting to you my dear friend and pastor you don't like to be called doctor <laughs> but he is officially Reverend Dr. Carmelis Put your hands together. Could you stand there and see the group?
and then a psalm for you. God has been good. And as I sing this evening, I'm doing this for the glory and praise of Almighty God. He really has been good to every one of us here. He sends the sun and the rain upon the just and the angels. But this song is quite an appropriate one. It stands in line with the message today. Stick to the plan. Look to your neighbor. I don't know what your neighbor has, but look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I am praying that that plan that you are working on, are working by that plan, that it's a plan.
Somebody give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise today. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified and to be glorified. I thank him this evening for being so good to all of us here. And even when there are those who are not faithful to him, he still extends his mercy. He still shows his love. Yes, yes he does. But this evening, He's speaking loud and clear. Better me, I don't know what's your intention when it comes to stick to the plan. I'm not quite sure of all that you may have in mind when you say I'm going to stick to the plan. But it behooves every one of us that whatever the plan is and whatever we are doing, that everything would be directed to the point where when it is all, when the work is all done, God will get all the glory yes. and He will get the praise. Yes. You see, we've got to take some things out of the way when we are working for the Almighty God. Our scripture lesson, and it's a lot we can read tonight, but I'll go through this message and I'll try to do it as briefly as I can. Because from your theme here, where uh, I am personally encouraged to stick to the plan. I know what that plan is. And I'm quite sure Pastor Duran knows what he's talking about. We may have a lot of things on our minds, but our main goal is to do what God says to do. In Luke 14, and I'm reading at verse 28, it says here, for which of you intended to build a tower, set it not down first and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Gracious God. It goes on to say, Less happily, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. A story has derived from the book of Esther. And what has come out from that lesson has really brought strength to me as I stand here as a pastor to let you know if we will take God at his word. You won't have to worry because every time yes. God will come through for you. Yes. There are going to be obstacles in your way. And more so, more so, whenever you are serving God, that's when the enemy gets stronger on your pathway. Amen. If you are sitting here this evening and you're not being plagued by the enemy, watch it. Yes. You are in the, you're doing the wrong thing. Yes. 
Anybody who embraces God and decides to walk according to the plan of Almighty God, you are treading on the ground where Satan will come momentarily. He will come and he will try to sweep you off your tracks. He will try to turn you back. But I want you to come to the conclusion whenever that uh, happens to you to say, greater is he yes. who is within me yes. than he that is in the world. Amen. Tell the devil I know in whom Amen. I believe. Amen. And I am persuaded yes. that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto the Lord. Our oh, God is able. Is he able in your life? Amen. Is he able in your life? Amen. You see, whatsoever is intended, Jesus has instructed us to do. Number one, sit down first. To make to impress others as to how great they are, yes, sir. how wonderful they can yes, do it. Yes, but I want you to sit back here and say, I can only do all things Christ. through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. And I want you to realize today that as a church, we are builders together. In the churches today, there is so much corruption, fightings, this one against the other. There's a pulling, there's a tearing apart. But God has called us to work together. And better me, as we can only accomplish the task or stick to the plan and have it come to the end completely when we are working together. Amen. Somebody may be the hand, yes. another the foot, one the eye, yes. but we are working together Amen. for the glory of Almighty God. Amen. You see, we have to understand that there are a lot of things in view as we travel on this life's pathway. But God calls us to one thing. As we are building, He calls us to holiness. Yes. We must live holy unto Almighty God. Amen. For without which, no man, no man is going to see God. You don't want to be building in vain. And I'm going to tell you this sometimes. People seem to think. Oh, then they say, oh, you are too holy. <laughs> Listen, you can never be too holy for Almighty God. Amen. Never in this life. Amen. As a matter of fact, He wants us to be holy as He is holy. Amen. You know, there's a common saying, I don't know how many of you have heard it. And it goes around all the time. Some people have heard it so many times. And I don't agree with it. It's commonly said. When someone notices. That you're living holy. Or you're trying to live holy. They say that you are too heavenly minded. You are too heavenly minded. To be earthly good. And that's not. A true statement. For everybody who is heavenly minded, he will be earthly good. Because there's nobody who was more heavenly minded than our Jesus. He was heavenly minded, but he was the most earthly good. He walked this earth. 
they did him so many things even to get him to stop what he was declaring to the people but he was purpose in his heart I am going to do what my father has sent me here to do and I call on the church to practice holiness it is one of the requirements as we travel along life's pathway you see we are workers together I go back to the theme stick to the plan do you imagine you and I are sitting here Sometimes we ask the question, where have I come from? What am I doing here? And where am I going? Every person sitting here, including me, you came from somewhere. And you are somewhere. And you're going somewhere. But I said to you as Jesus said, let us take heed as to how we are building this evening. Because some, Jesus said, have built it on shaky foundations. They have built it on the sand. But only he or she who builds on the solid rock one day the rain will come the floods will come and surround you but when you're on a solid rock it doesn't matter how much the devil tries to shake and to break you you're going to keep on standing oh precious God I'm glad for the songwriter as he says standing on the promises of almighty God Nothing can move you when you're anchored in Jesus Christ. Nothing can sweep you away when you're on that foundation. Because that foundation is Christ Jesus. I'm so glad for what God is doing in these times. Do you know as you sit here, some of us may be still wondering. <clears throat> wondering about things around us and you wonder why things happen the way they do think of the god we are he's a great big wonderful god do you imagine he has been the greatest builder You and I are only practicing. So when I was asking where were these things, 
This is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said the stones, the trees, the sand, the earth, everything was in God. Yes. Amen. That is powerful. It's like, and he began to explain, it's like an architect. He sits down and he is going to make a building. And he takes a piece of paper and he takes his pencil and he begins to map out what he wants done. He puts every room. He puts everything on that plan. But do you know when he was finished or when he is finished in his mind the building is done that's right that's right it's only to amen. put it up in his amen. mind it's done amen so the holy spirit said to me in god lord he marked it out in here and he came on the scene and he said let there be and when he said let there be coming out from his mouth somebody needs to praise God oh gracious God he stuck to the plan that he had and when he said let there be trees the trees came out of him let there be stones the stones came out of him let there be animals they came out of him Oh gracious God. Hallelujah. Everything was in here. Greatest master builder in the universe. And there was there would never be another to compare with Almighty God. He moves when he wants to. He does what he feels like doing. He's such a great God. He even writes upon the winds. I don't understand all these things. He takes the clouds and he makes himself chariots. That's how God moves. He's a mighty working God. The almighty one who can do exceeding. Abundantly above all that we may act so think. He moves when he wants to. He does what pleases him best. He asks no man any question. Nobody can tell him what to do. Oh, precious God. He moves and he does what pleases him best. Because he's God. All by himself. Nobody voted him into office. And nobody can vote him out. He's God and God. Somebody needs to give him glory. Yes, he moves Hallelujah. when he wants to. He does what pleases him. Nobody can tell him. You know, there's a song we sing and I don't like it. <laughs> Hear what it says. When God says no, nobody can say yes. That's not true. And when God says yes, nobody can say no. That's not true. God been saying yes a lot. The final. Oh God, oh God help me teach this evening. He has the final say, and you can say no as much as you want. It is still yes, and you can say yes as much as you want. It is still no, because he's a wise master builder. He knows what to do. And how to do and when to do. That's the God we serve. Everybody here should trust Him. Everybody here should praise Him. Everybody here should magnify His holy name. He is worthy to be praised. Gracious God, what a Savior. Lord, I thank you. You see, what I am saying, I want you to know it makes sense. 
how God built it everything. I mean, he brought everything, created everything. Do you know right now, we are told that once Antichrist comes on the scene, that the Jewish people are going to find themselves forced in temporary peace. Yes. Temporary. Because we're told in the middle of seven years, Antichrist is going to break the peace treaty. But what's going to happen before that? Because of this peace treaty, he would sign with the Israeli people. Giving them permission. And let me say this. This is true. Some of you have heard of where Abraham took Isaac on the mountainside to sacrifice him unto the Lord. Right in that area, there is something there called the Dome of the Rock. I've been there. I've been in the Dome of the Rock. Beautiful place. And right in that area, the Jews are waiting to build the temple in which Antichrist will sit. And after a period of time, he will desecrate that temple. But the what I'm told, and I believe it's true, the temple, today, right as we are speaking, has already been built. But it is not on the site. Let me explain this to you. I pastored on the island of St. Thomas. And right where the church building is located, one night of the service, I left, went to my home. And when I came back the next night at the church, there was a building right next to the church already wired i'm telling you back rooms were in everything was in that you know why it was pre-fabricated let me tell you this that i'm taking that to show you that when you are building make sure you're doing the right thing because when you go to construct that building if things are not in place, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to be like Jesus said. You started and you're not able to finish. But as you look at that temple, right now the temple is built. It's resting somewhere I don't know. But as soon as they get the permission, to build that temple. It could be just in a week or so that temple would be erected. Finished. Because it's been built already. Why am I using these illustrations? You are sitting here tonight. I don't know what materials you have put together. I don't know how you have cut your plants and whatever. I don't know how you have made out the rafters. But be sure that you have done the right thing. Because in process, if you have not done the right thing, you'll find yourself backing up and saying, what did I do here? But be sure tonight that you're sticking to the plan. And the plan must be the plan that God has injected into you to do the job that will bring a final praise and glory to Almighty God. Amen. Let's give him praise in this house. Some people are building crookedly. When you look on the pathway today, listen, saints, please, don't hold me responsible for this. Some of the most crooked builders are in the churches today. Are you hearing that? I'm going to say it again. Yes. I said some of the most crooked builders, they're in the churches today. Yes. Everywhere you go, 
you find them building crookedly. Oh yes, but let me tell you this, nothing that is built different to God's plan will ever stand. He's saying to us, we must do what he says to do. And do it the way he says to do it. Unless that is done, we're going to find ourselves hearing him say, friend, depart from me. I don't even know you. Do you know this? Do you know this? I don't think some of us really come to the seriousness of serving Christ and walking with Christ. Do you know most of the people in the church? And don't blame me for this. Do you know most of the people in the church today will not be in the rapture? Oh, you didn't know? I didn't say it, so don't hold me responsible. Jesus said it. They are the most people in the church will not. Everybody says, many will say to me on that day. Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? Oh, you talk about speaking in tongues? We got them in the church. Oh, you remember when I was speaking in the Shandam or Shatai and all that kind of Oh, precious God. Let me tell you something. It's only holiness and doing the right thing and sticking to the plan of God that would bring you into the presence of God where you'll hear him say, well done. Now go and faithful servant. I've been in the presence of the Almighty God. I can tell you a lot of things about him. Let me tell you this tonight. There is nothing that anybody can do to me. I don't care who she or he is that can make me change. Change my plan. I have a plan. What about you? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you have a plan? Do you have a plan? Let me tell you this. Even though you don't have a plan, you still have a plan. You hear what I'm saying? Even though you don't have a plan, you still have a plan. But you don't know that you have a plan. Because the way you serve God, it shows that you're walking according to a plan. Let me tell you this tonight. A journey of a million miles begins with one step. And it's going to end with one step. Jesus, help me here, Lord. Help me, Jesus. You remember that man in Genesis when the Bible says, and he never walked with God? He'd been walking maybe for years with him. And he took one step. And he was out of here into heaven. You remember Elijah? Just cross over Jordan. It was a journey. But let's put it this way. They were builders. He was building in the kingdom of God. And all at once. In a moment. Thank God Elisha was quick to behold him. When the chariot came. And separated them both. And he, Elisha looked up and he saw him and he said. My father. Oh gracious God. And the mantle fell. And he picked up the
God always has a plan. And the plan that God has, it may not be what you are even thinking. Because God does some things, they look so crazy that you will say, that is not God. And let me tell you, God doesn't come and work in the smooth things. He works in the rough seas, in on the rough pathways. That's how he works. When it doesn't look like God, I can tell you some stories about my life. Amazing. The path where he took me. The things he did. And there were times, let me tell you, one time I questioned God when some things began to happen. And I said, God, why, why? I'm living holy. Never cheated on a wife. Never went out there from the time I could remember in the year 1970. I mean, 70. I wasn't married. And I said, God, I would never commit fornication. And should I get married, I would never cheat on my wife. And up to this very day, I knew one woman up to this very day. But don't think that they're not going to talk about you when you're doing the right thing, when you're, when, when, when you're using the right plan. They're going to call your names. <laughs> oh, you're not hearing me, you know. You see, they're not talking about you, but I can tell you some things that they said about me. And sometimes I said, Lord, where they got that from? They call me thief. Extortioner. Let me tell you, I can go through some things and tell you tonight. But you know what happened? I have a plan. Amen. Oh, somebody give him glory. Amen. I have a plan. I have a plan. I'm going to make it to the end of this journey. Because I know in whom I believe. And I am persuaded. That my God is able. Somebody say he's able tonight. Oh gracious God. If you have a plan, you need to shout in this house. You need to shout. Notice what happened. God had a plan. And he has been still within a, a, a man. Who seemed to have had a connection with God. Mordecai was very special. He took his niece. And being into an, an, a land of exile, he decided, I'm going to follow God's plan. And he stuck to the plan. The enemy came to sway him from the plan. And the Bible says that he sent for his wife to show off her beauty and she refused to come. But little did he know God had a plan. God had a plan. And the men, the men, the upright men in his kingdom said, listen, you've got to do something about this. <laughs> because when this goes around, and the people hear about it, listen, you know what the wives are going to do to their own husbands. And you won't be able to turn this around. You've got to do something. But little did he know this was God's doing. 
Do you know when God comes in to work, it doesn't look like God. No, it doesn't look like Him. But this was God. God would interrupt your plans. He would change your program. Oh God, have mercy. Yes, He would turn things differently. He would make things look differently. Make it look stupid. Make it foolish. And He would take the foolish things of the world and He would confound the world. And when it was done, here comes the beautiful ladies and the chamberlains, they brought them in. And look at this, as they came in, there was one special lady. Oh gracious God, thank you. Somebody give God praise. This was the Lord's doing. Because plan was being made to kill all the Jews. If you're God's child this evening, you can rest assured if you put your hand in God's hand, He's going to protect you. And He's going to take you through. He's going to make ways where there is no way. He's going to open doors. But there are no doors. And where doors are open against you, He's going to shut Oh, God is able to give him praise. Yeah, yeah. And here comes this lady. I'm going to tell you, read the scripture. She didn't put on the beauty like the other ladies. Read the scripture. She didn't put on the beauty. In other words, she didn't go to the beauty salon. She was plain, natural. Read the scripture. You'll see. And do you know she was chosen? above Everyone. all of the other ladies. Yes. Yes. When God has a plan for your life, yes. nobody can reverse it and nobody yes. can stop it. Yes. And she walks right and she became the wife of the king. To cut the story short, the devil stepped in. We are going to get rid of these people. Using a man named Haman. And Haman had all his plans. What he was going to do and he stuck to his plan. But look at what happened. Oh gracious God, I, I love you Jesus. I thank you. Give him praise with me. Thank you, thank you. Haman needed worship. To want the men at the gate to bow down to him. Mordecai said, no way. I have a plan. My plan is to follow God. My plan is to worship God and him only I'm going to serve. That's my God. I'm going to lift up my God. I'm not bowing down to you, him. And when this was refused, he had a plan. And cutting the story short, you know what happened. He built a gallery. He said they were going to hang Mordecai on this gallows. And the story goes on to say that mm, Jesus, he was making plans now to meet with the king and to meet, oh God, to ask the king to do what he, what his plan was. When all at once God had a plan being carried out by a woman named Esther. Yes. Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. And cutting the story short, it says it comes to the place where when the king met with Esther and met with this man who's trying to destroy God's people. The Bible tells us that upon Esther's request, something changed. You see, Mordecai pressed it. And he said, let me tell you something, Esther. You've got to do something. Every life of the Jewish people is being jeopardized. You've got to do something. We all are going to die and don't think that you are going to escape in this kingdom. 
And when it's the got the news, she had a plan. Yeah. Oh, somebody give him praise. She developed a plan. He said, tell everybody. For three days, we are going to fast. Oh God, what is your plan today? I feel something coming. I've got a plan. We're going to fast for three days. Let no one eat. Even the animals, put them up. Don't let them. We are going to fast. And I am going to go in before the king. And if I perish, oh gracious God, somebody needs to show. I don't know how you're serving God. But if I perish, let me perish. But I'm going to see the king. He didn't call for me. But I'm going to see the king. I'm going to walk in before him. Oh yes. Hallelujah. But God designed it to be so. That things change and turn the wrong. And favor. Favor me. Hallelujah. And man, let me see this little bird. Hear thou, Haman had lives being jeopardized, but now his life is in jeopardy. That's right. And the word of God says, as the queen, the queen made request on behalf of her people, and she told of what this man had planned against the Jewish people. The king asked the question, who is this man? And she said, that man you see sitting right here. And he has already built the gallows yes. on which he had a plan. He had a plan. He built the gallows on which to hang Mordecai. And the king had a plan. It's a plan with another plan. And a plan against a plan. He says, take him on. And hang him. God of mercy. Jesus, I thank you. I give you praise. I'm going to come to a close in a little while. Gracious God. I have a plan. Listen. If your building stay on the wall. Do like Nehemiah. They sent messages to Nehemiah. And they said, Nehemiah, come down. Here, here. I, I love this part of this message. When Tobiah sent to call him and said, come down and let us meet in the plains of oh no. I can just hear Nehemiah saying, oh no. That's right. <laughs> oh no. Right. I'm not coming down. I have a plan. I'm going to finish this war. Stick to your plan. Things may be rough, but hold in there. I'm not coming down. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning around. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to finish this work. What is your plan? What is your plan? You know all of us should have a plan. Daniel had a plan. I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had a plan. The Bible tells us that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were told, along with the others, to bow down to an idol. And they refused to bow. And the Bible says the king had come to the conclusion.
problems and cares of life would come to press you down. But hold in there, don't quit. If you have to rest, rest if you must. But don't quit. Because God is expecting you to do a finished job. There are going to be twists and turns in the journey. But don't give up. Stick to the plan. You're going to experience failures while building. But stick to the plan. Remember, it's not going to go smoothly. There's never anything like a smooth pathway for a child of God. It was a smooth for Jesus. It's not going to be smooth for you. He said, if they did this to me, I'm a green tree. Think of what they'll do to you at dry tree. Your pace as you're going forward may become slow, but stick to the plan. You're going to have some fights, but stick to the plan. Even when your heart is hit, still stick to the plan. It's when, it's when things seem worse that you must stick to the plan. Do you know the worst part is when you're coming right to the conclusion of what you're doing. But stick to the plan. Look around to your neighbor one more time and say, neighbors, we are working. Work us together. We are workers together. Let's stick to the plan. Say, neighbor, God is able. And when you meet failures, just call upon the name of the Lord. And everything that the enemy has brought to distract you, God will take it and he'll turn it. Bow heads with me this I thank you. Every day I'm saying, Lord, come, come. Things have changed so rapidly. Church is not what they used to be. No, no. Pastors are impregnating the members. Oh, God help us. Liars and thieves. Murderers right in the church. Lord, help us that we who are faithful would stand fast in the liberty where you have made us. Touch again, Father. Touch in the name of Jesus. 
And just before I hand back this microphone, I've been doing it everywhere because I was asked to do it. I want to give you just some of the things Jesus told me. Let me say this to you. Some of you, and you may doubt this, it's a true, true, true thing. In the year 1999, we had just finished the morning worship, and I was sitting on the platform. And while I was sitting there, one of my ministers ran in and said, the son of Abraham came to visit. I knew what she meant because son of Abraham has to be a Jewish person. Because you look at him, he was Jewish. Yes, he was. And this is what happened. I run from the platform and I run down into the lobby and I saw this man and he was looking at the writings on the wall and I shook his hand and as I shook his hand and I introduced myself he didn't tell me what was his name but while talking I took him right like you see we have that control room there you know where it is those of you who have been to 969 Bedford right by the door and he looked at me and he said, do you have a cross? And he said, you believe in the cross? And I looked to the pulpit and I, I said, look, you know what, it surprised me that a Jewish man asked me if I had a cross because they don't believe in the cross. How I know that? When we put up the urn into the front, it didn't come with the cross. And I said to the worker, where's my cross? He said, don't you know? You can't even put that up in the factory. The Jews don't believe in it. But a Jewish man, I mean one from the tribe of Judah, came and asked me, do you have a cross? But he came to remind me what Jesus told me prior to that. I am perfecting what you're going through for my glory. Now let me explain to you what happened. I took him right by the door and I thought he was from Williamsburg. And you know how close the control room is to the door. I ran inside to pick up my keys. And when I came back, he was nowhere around. It was an angel. So I'm only telling you that to tell you. I met with the Lord on several occasions. I've been to heaven. That's not a joke. It's serious business. I have been to heaven. There's a street that I name in heaven, Victory Boulevard, and you can bet your life when you get to heaven, if you get to heaven, there's a Victory Boulevard over there. That is a truth. But I'm telling you, not too long, Jesus met me. One, let me go, I'm going to close now. I had a gun and I was folding the gun. I was folding the gun. And he was giving me problems folding it. Jesus wasn't looking at me, but he was mad. And Jesus is still mad today. He's still mad. I don't know why he was mad at that time, but he told me after why. But he said like this, and I'm telling you exactly what he told, what he said. He wasn't talking to me. He said, it's not the wind. Just like that, he was angry. It's not the weather. Because people would say it's because of the wind, why they dress that way. And because of the weather, why they dress that way. He says it's about the ultimate dress code. Let's follow the plan. You hear what I'm telling you? There's a dress code in the Bible for the children of Almighty God. 
Amen. God cannot change. He said, heaven and earth will pass. But my word. Secondly, he came to me and he said to me, but he told me why he was so angry. He said, they have put away the dress code. It's not modern dress code. It's modest. You'll find it in 1 Timothy 2, 9. Read it there. And Jesus came to me again. And he said, my, he says, he didn't say my people, he said, he said, they have defaced my image. Go back to Genesis 1, 27. He said, he made man in his own image. But he said, they have defaced my image. He told me this. And then he came again and he said to me, Tell the women, I say, to keep a holy standard. I'm not, I'm not telling you Nancy's story, you know. Shoot your things. Tell the women, I say. And you might wonder why he sent this directly to the women. Oh, you don't know why? Look in the world to then see. All the way from Eden. Jesus, God made them coats, but they're still wearing aprons. <laughs> Lastly, I give you this one. He said, tell my people, I am coming soon. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not refuting you or putting down what you say, but this is my belief. Even this morning, we were wishing, you know, one of our couple's anniversary. I never, I don't do it anymore. I don't wish anybody many years. You know why? Jesus said, he's coming in this generation. And that is true. Father, I thank you. Just go ahead a little bit for me. Stand to your feet, everybody. Is there one person in here? Give me a little key here. Come to my soul, blessed Jesus, hear me, O Savior,
this time we're going to call all of the ministers of Bethany to join us at the restaurant, please. All of the ministers of Bethany. Could you take your seats for a minute? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your shine glory will spread over their lives. I pray the Holy Spirit will direct them. I pray your Holy Spirit will instruct them. I pray God that you will give them a new vision. Your word declare without a vision, the people will perish. And God, you know that the church need a vision for this time. And the time in which we are living in. We are not in the morning light time. We are not in the Esther time. But God, we are in your time. And these are your ministers. These are your chosen one. And this afternoon, I pray, oh God, for a cleansing. I pray this afternoon, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will go forth right now. Search the heart. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, you will do a soul incision upon your minister's life. I pray, oh God, and you will send the forth. Glory be to God, so that you, oh God, will get the glory. Father, this afternoon, I pray, God, you will touch their prayer lives. I pray, oh God, that there will be an anointing of praise upon these 
people. I pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, when they come in your presence, uh, God, that they will stand uh, in truth. Uh, your word declare uh, that they that worship me must worship me in spirit uh, and in truth. Uh, and you are calling them uh, to a place of true worship. Uh, you are calling them uh, to a place where you can find out. Uh, you are calling them to a place uh, where you can build uh, a relationship. Uh, Yes. 
Jesus, let's attack this body right now in the name of Jesus. We come against you, Satan. We dismantle your plans. We cancel your assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray the blood of Jesus right now upon your servant. Oh God, we come and it. And by faith believing, we believe that it is done. In the name of Jesus, we believe that you complete the work in the mighty name of Jesus. And we are looking for manifestation. We declare manifestation right now upon this body. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost, we speak to this obstacle. We come against this obstacle right now. And we have to come move it. This is what they call aid. It's not a In the mighty name of Jesus, and oh God, I ask that you give him a, a staff in his hands that you have given to Moses, that he can use, that he can transform, that he will transform. Thus said the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, and we ask that you bind the suffering together with cords that cannot be broken. We ask for the cords of love, the cords of unity. We come against conversation and we say no, hallelujah. We say no, we say no, we say no. Ah, we bind up the spirit of gossiping, gossiping in the name of Jesus. Distraction in the name of Jesus. Every distracted spirit that come upon these ministers, we come against it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God is of truth. The worldly place has already been settled in heaven. And we know that it is settled in heaven. And you lay your presence upon their lives and in their lives right now. In Jesus' name. 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 Stand strong. Lord, in Jesus' name, don't give up, don't be discouraged, don't give up, hallelujah, stand up strong, said the Lord, stand up strong, said the Lord, don't be discouraged, the Lord God is going to settle the difference, and better than will never be the same again, as of this day, but we declare your works right now, in Jesus' name. Better than the Lord is calling you back to worship and to a higher place of praise and to stand upon the mountains and to glorify His name. There are many mountains here. You understand them then. In Jesus' name, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, pastors. We thank you, ministers. Ministers of Bethany, could you remain, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have your seats just briefly. Hallelujah. He left his instructions. Hallelujah. has also requested that each minister would greet us briefly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord saints. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Who don't know me, my name is Sister Cummings. And I will go by Deaconess. Sister Cummings is good. Glory to God. It's so nice having everyone here today. And I just want to greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was a tough 20 years, but 
God did not bring us this far to leave us. So we are happy to have you all to celebrate with us today. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. It's such a great honor when we can say we are celebrating 20 years. Just want to give God thanks and praise because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? We've been through the storm. We've been through the storm and I just want to say thanks be to God for bringing us thus far. And I want to say thank you for coming out and fellowshipping with us. God bless you. To God be the glory, great things he has done. We bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody with me. Bless God with me today. God is good to many dangers, storms, and snares. We have already come. This grace that brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us all. Be confident of this one thing. That he which hath begun a good work in us is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you for your continued support and we look forward for your continued support as we work towards the kingdom of God. May God continue to bless you real good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the church say. Amen. 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 Truly it's a blessing, brethren, sisters, to have you fellowshipping here with us today. Amen. I pray God will bless you richly. Amen. Praise God. We are always happy to see friends, support, and to see my good friend here, Pastor Hector. You always come in late to the party. One of these days, you know, close the door on you. Glad to see you, preacher. Amen. Amen. But let me say, God has been good to us. And I just want to let you know that when you leave here today, continue to keep us in prayer as we will do the same for you. Because it is not easy. Praise God. Being, let me say, a minister. Because ministers have their own duties to perform in the ministry. It's not easy at times. So, brethren, let us support each other and encourage each other. Pastor, Olive, bless you, sir. As our pastor said, Pastor Olive has been very supportive to us here at Bethany. Praise God. He always there for us. Help us out in so many ways. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor, because I deal with him all the time. And to the saints that come with you and the saints that work along with you, brethren, support the man of God. Pray for him. Bless him. And speak highly of him. God bless you all. Hope to see you again next year.